So thank you for joining our webinar, Five Reasons to Earn a Master's in Counseling at Divine Mercy University. Momentarily, I just want to share with you um, that if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the webinar. You can go ahead and as they occur to you, just pop them either into the chat box or into the Q&A on your Zoom controls, and I'll be happy to answer them once we get to the end of the presentation. So here we go. We are Divine Mercy University. We're a graduate school of psychology and counseling. Um, we were founded in the late 90s under the name Institute for the Psychological Sciences. So that college still exists. It houses our psychology side. So we do have another online master's in general psychology that we offer for people who work in the helping professions and need um, just a general, more general non-clinical degree. Uh, we also have an on-site doctoral program. So we do have an actual campus in Virginia with classrooms and a library and all that stuff that a, that a school usually has. Um, and we have uh, students who are studying for their doctorate in clinical psychology who are on campus most of the year. But what they found through offering those programs was that there was such a need for counselors and particularly for counselors of faith. So that's when they decided to go ahead and add the second school that we're discussing, the School of Counseling and the Masters in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. So when a college has more than one when a, when a school has more than one college, that's the point at which they take a university name. So that's how we made the switch from being plain old IPS or Institute for the Psychological Sciences to Divine Mercy University. We seek to provide our students an effective academic and educational environment to support the integration of the human sciences and a Catholic Christian understanding of the person. Our school is accredited, so we are institutionally accredited by the Southern Association, or SACS is the acronym. Um, so this is the baseline accreditation you should look for in any U.S. school you attend. Um, if you're looking at other schools and they can't give you a simple yes to this institutional accreditation question, that's your sign to go very quickly in the opposite direction. So institutional is just the baseline for any U.S. school. Um, the way it works is each area of the country has its own accrediting agency. Each one has a different name, of course, just to make it clear, you know. <laughs> uh, so our region is called the Southern Association. It goes from where we are in Virginia all the way down around to Texas. So UT, Auburn, UVA, all those schools are accredited by SACS, just like we are. Um, when you start talking about psychology and counseling, there are a couple of extra accreditations that can be earned. Um, American Psychological Association that you see down there in the bottom middle, that's kind of the big dog of all of the um, specialized accreditations. Most people have heard of APA. Um, and our school became only the second school in the whole history of the APA to receive the full seven-year accreditation grant on the first try. So that's a really a big deal. Now, when you start talking about counseling, the extra accreditation for that type of program is known by the acronym KCREP, C-A-C-R-E-P. Now that stands for Council for Accreditation of Counseling and Related Educational Programs. So C-A-C-R-E-P. If you haven't heard of this accreditation yet, just you know, start telling people you're interested in becoming a mental health professional and I guarantee you, you'll hear about it pretty quickly. So KCREP is a great thing to have. We're committed to earning it for our students. But the reality of that accreditation is that most states do not require it for licensing. So right now our degree is fine as is without KCREP in 39 states. Once we wrap up that accreditation, um, the 10 states that do require it will come under our umbrella and our degree will be fine in 49 states. The one holdout is going to be Illinois and that's because to be licensed in Illinois, you actually have to go to school in state. Um, we'll rectify that at some point, but right now our main focus is just the KCREP. So uh, we're about a year from wrapping that uh, up at most. We've done everything we need to do. So um, we're just waiting on them to work through their bureaucratic backlog to get to us, do our on-site review, and then hopefully award accreditation. So that's the long and the short of accreditation and DMU. If you have questions, please, again, pop them into the chat. I'd be happy to deal with them once we get to the end of this presentation. All right, so what makes DMU different? Um, well, it's our Catholic Christian meta model of the person. So um, this model is unique to our university. It was developed by our faculty, and it's the reason that most students choose our school. 
So through this model, they will uh, train you as a student to, um, you know, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. So um, the meta model will, is used, it's, our program is informed and infused by this model. Um, and they will teach you to frame a treatment plan based on the Catholic understanding of the person that we are integrated beings, body, mind, and soul. And so as a therapist, when you inevitably encounter somebody who doesn't believe in God or doesn't want to talk about God, that's okay. You know, we understand that the objective truth of who they are and how they were created does not hinge on their belief or unbelief. So you can help someone reach flourishing, even if they never want to talk about God. Uh, the other thing the model does is it teaches such a nuanced understanding of the person that it would take a non-DMU trained therapist really a lifetime of practice and trial and error to kind of figure out on their own if they ever fully do. So you will graduate with a leg up even on seasoned counselors. Um, that's not just a talking point. You know, in my travels for the university, I have spoken with internship site directors who work with our students in their internships and and uh, practicum, and they say that our students are far better prepared than their peers who are supposedly at the same place in their education. A lot of that has to do with um, this model and that preparation that you are given. All right. So again, I encourage you to find this on our website, read through it. Um, this model is unique to our university and it's why the vast majority of students choose our school. All right, so here we go. And the first reason to earn a master's in clinical mental health counseling, our degree program does prepare you for licensure in your state. Licensing happens after you graduate. Typically it includes both a national and a state exam, although that varies by state. Once you pass those exams, you're then provisionally licensed. And just like a doctor does a residency after medical school, it's similar for counselors in that uh, while you'll be working and being paid as a therapist, um, you'll still have that safety net of somebody to review your cases with you, discuss clients, problems you might be encountering. Um, and usually it takes about two years to wrap up that supervised period. Um, I will tell you that um, of our students who apply for licensure, or excuse me, sit for their licensure exams after graduation, 100% pass their licensing exams. So um, we are invested in our students and to make sure that you meet uh, the requirements for your state licensing. All right, so second reason to earn a master's in clinical mental health counseling. Um, oops, oops, sorry about that. So second reason to earn a master's in clinical mental health counseling is practical experience through our residency practicum and internship. So um, this program is an online hybrid. Um, so a lot of the work will be done online. It's available 24 seven, whenever it suits you to access the material, but obviously counseling is a helping and a people profession. So there are certain aspects that just don't lend themselves to online learning. So that's why we've established residency practicum and internship, just to make sure that you get the skills you need in the best way we can teach them to you. So um, residency comes first and residency happens three times as you move through your online studies. And they use that time together here on campus over a long weekend to teach the counseling skills that don't lend themselves to online learning. So things like nonverbal communication, situational ethics, there are always a ton of presentations going on by faculty, students, and student groups. It's also a big gateway weekend. So all the professors are there with you and they're looking to make sure that each student has gained the skills needed to be ready to move on to the next section. So the first one's always eight weeks after you begin. So right now we're enrolling for the January cohort Students who begin school in January will come to campus for the first time early in March. Um, the second one's always a year later, so you'd come back the following March. And then the third one is six months to a year after the second one, depending on if you're full-time or part-time. 
They are four days long, so you arrive on a Wednesday evening and stay through a Sunday afternoon. While you're here, they'll expect you to be on site and attend the whole program. Uh, there is a fee for the training that's built into your tuition. The breakdown is $1,500 per residency. That fee covers your training, obviously, but also your hotel and most of your meals while you're here. So one-stop shopping, all you have to do is show up and we'll take care of the rest. Now, once you've finished the bulk of your online classes and you've completed your third residency, you'll then step into practicum and internship. And these two are done in your own area based on the kind of counseling work you'd like to do. So of the two, practicum comes first. Practicum is 100 hours of on-the-job training. This is what gets you ready for the real hands-on counseling work of your internship. Um, at least 40 of those 100 hours will be direct service with actual counseling clients. Uh, once you wrap up that 100 hours of on-the-job training, you'll then step into your two internships. Each internship is 300 hours and spans 16 weeks. Uh, we do have a director of internship internship who will work with you to help you identify a few places in your area that you'd like to work based on the kind of counseling work you'd like to do, you know, whether it's marriage and family, addictions, trauma, you know, whatever it is that interests you, you would choose accordingly. Our internship placement is 100%, so you will get one and we'll help you with it. All right, any questions about practicum and internship or anything we've talked about up to this point, again, please feel free to pop your questions into the Q&A or into the chat and we'll handle them at the end of the discussion. All right, so um, third reason to earn a master's in clinical mental health counseling, well, it's our great faculty. Here are a few. Now, I'm sorry, the first picture is very nice. Dr. West, he's great. He is not academic dean anymore. That's Dr. Vivleka. Um, Dr. West had to step back because of some health concerns. So um, we have Dr. Uh, Freddie Vivleka. She has taken over his spot and she's, I believe, from Texas somewhere. Um, we also have um, to the right of Dr. West, we have Dr. Keyes and Dr. Sharp. They are our internship site directors. So when you're searching for an internship site that's best for you in your area, one of these two will help you. Dr. Keyes handles everybody east of the Mississippi and Dr. We Dr. Sharp handles everyone west of the Mississippi. Um, and then continuing on, we have Dr. D. Leaco. Uh, he actually lives and works in Philippines. Um, so he um, is a one of our international faculty. And then Dr. Humes is terrific as well. She lives here in the US and um, you'll work with her probably pretty early in your studies. So you can find the bios and contact information for all of our professors on our website. Just go to the counseling pages, click on faculty and all of these names, bios and credentials will pop up as well as email address. Uh, I should note that all of our practice, all of our faculty are practicing and experienced clinicians, so they do understand what you need to learn to live out your vocation as a counselor. All right, fourth reason to earn a master's in clinical mental health counseling. Well, J-O-B, of course, that's what just about everyone asks about, you know, what, what job can I get? Um, most people who earn this degree tend to do so because they want to become a mental health professional. So most people go into some kind of um, therapist role where they help people reach flourishing through talk therapy. Um, so these are just a list of a few things that people tend to focus on once they become a mental health professional. Um, it is, as I said, a very versatile degree. Um, for a time, the Dean of Students at DMU was someone who had a master's in counseling um, in the town where I live in my county. The uh, director of social services is someone um, who has a master's in counseling and she's in charge of all the social workers in our county. Um, so as I said, very versatile. You can do a lot of things with it. Most people do tend to earn this degree because they want to become a therapist of some, some sort. Um, and then the second question I get a lot is how much am I going, going to earn? And my answer is, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> so it really varies extremely widely. So if you want to work in a homeless shelter, obviously you're going to earn a homeless shelter salary. 
Um, if you live in a reasonably metropolitan area and you go into private practice, hang out your shingle, um, you're going to get up to six figures pretty quickly. So like I said, depends on where you live, what you want to do. Um, your search engine is your friend. You can go ahead and get on there and kind of figure out what it is uh, people tend to earn in your area for this kind of work. All right, fifth reason to earn a master's in clinical mental health counseling, it's extremely flexible. You can learn anywhere, anytime, as long as you have your computer and the internet, you can be just about anywhere in the world you wanna be and still get your schoolwork done. Um, as you move through your classes, um, well, I should say the classes are, as I mentioned briefly earlier, they're available 24 seven, whenever it suits you to access the material. Um, as you move through those studies, the professors will arrange for weekly real-time meetings or synchronous meetings to do things like question and answer, discussion group review, that kind of thing. So they will um, schedule them to accommodate all of the U.S. time zones. It's inevitable. There'll be one or two you can't make. In that instance, what they'll do is record them, put them online for you to watch as you can, and you join the discussion as it goes forward online. The important takeaway, though, is that um, you will be working very closely with your professors. Um, you'll also work very closely with the other students in your cohort, obviously, to build, um, you know, counseling skills, but also to build the professional friendships and relationships that you'll need once you become a mental health professional. All right, so our acceptance requirements, uh, to if you want to become a a student with us in the counseling program is you have to have a bachelor's degree. Um, we also require a GPA of 3.0 overall or in your major or in your last 60 credits. Now, if you feel like your GPA is probably a little bit below that, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. It just means you have an extra step to get the requirement waived, but you can, you know, pose that to me uh, once you have applied and I can help you work through that little hurdle. Uh, we also require the GRE. Now, if you've never heard of the GRE, it's a standardized entrance exam for graduate school, similar to the SAT that people do to get into a, a bachelor's program. Um, we do not use the GRE to make admissions decisions. In fact, you can apply and be fully admitted before we ever see your GRE score. But you do have to do it um, unless you have a master's degree or higher, in which case we can get that requirement waived for you. Um, you have to you know, complete your admissions application, um, complete your scholarship work. Everybody gets a scholarship at DMU. And then um, we will you know, move towards acceptance through the interview process. Um, we also require official transcripts from your undergraduate institution. Um, if you're an international student and your transcript is in a language other than English, it would need to be translated. If it's graded on a scale other than the 4.0 that we use here in the US, it would also need to be evaluated course by course for US equivalency. Again, if you're an international student and your first language is not English, then um, we require the TOEFL and you can see the score requirements there. So here's where it gets real. Right now, the degree is 898 per credit it's a 66 credit master's degree. So 898 times 66 is 59,268. There is a $50 technology fee per class for a total of 1,100. Lab fees are 375. Uh, and then the residency fee we talked about that covers your hotel and meals while you're here for training, 1,500 per residency for a total of 4,500. So all that together gives you a total tuition value for the whole program start to finish of 65,243. So that's 65,243. Ordinarily, there's a $55 application fee, but as a thank you for attending this webinar, we are going to waive that for you. So graduate school is affordable at DMU. Uh, we do participate fully with the federal loan program. So if you felt like you wanted or needed a student loan, we can certainly help you with that. Uh, if you're working, some employers do offer tuition reimbursement, so it's definitely worth investigating to see if that might be a benefit available to you. 
Uh, we're also approved for the VA, the GI Bill. We're also a yellow ribbon school. So if you have those benefits or if they can be assigned to you, uh, we participate with all of those. Uh, DMU has a very nice scholarship program available. They're designed so that everybody qualifies for something. Uh, the way scholarships work is you can apply for four and you can accept two. Right now we're giving away a bonus third scholarship, an extra $2,000 just for getting your paperwork started early. Um, we also have a matching scholarship available. So if you can find support from outside the institution, that is from a nonprofit agency, fraternal or religious type organization, a church, you know, some sort of nonprofit, uh, we would match that up to $2,000. So that's an easy way to double your money there. We also have a cash plan we can set up internally that's interest free. Um, school is billed by semester. So if you felt like you could chip away at it a little bit each month, uh, we can set that up for you at no charge. There's also an interesting federal program called National Health Service Corps. I encourage you to just pop that name into your favorite search engine. You, it will come up first link. Um, this is a tuition forgiveness program. And the way it works is if you're willing to uh, serve in an area designated either low income or underserved for two years after you graduate, they will give you a lump sum of up to $50,000 towards your student loan debt in exchange for that um, after you've served three months of your agreed upon two year time period. So this is a great way to go if you can work it out. Since you have to work under supervision anyway after you graduate, this becomes a real no brainer if you live in you know, an area that has some great um, opportunities. If you just go to their site, you dig a little bit, you'll find an interactive map that shows you who's hiring right now in your area under this plan. Now, obviously, that would change in the two or three years it would take you to graduate, or I should say three or four years it would take you to graduate, but um, definitely worth looking into as an option for funding your degree. Um, DMU partners with certain institutions. You can see a few of the logos here, certain dioceses, certain universities, certain mission companies. Um, if, you know, if you are affiliated with some of these or any other partners listed on our website, uh, this is not a complete list by any means. Uh, neither is the one on our website. Um, but the way it works is we would give you a tuition reduction based on our partnership uh, with these institutions. Um, if you don't see your institution listed, but you have an affiliation with a parish or diocese, that we can verify that would be good for a 15% um, scholarship in addition to the scholarships that I mentioned before. So you can certainly stack up a few of these. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we make funding it easy to do and we give significant discounts on tuition through partnerships and other scholarships. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you graduated from a college that has a Newman Center then, um, or Catholic Campus Ministry, then probably the, we have a partnership with your school and you would be eligible for this extra 15% scholarship. All right, so our acceptance requirements are a bachelor's degree with a GPA of 3.0 overall or in your major or in your last 60 credits. We also require the GRE, although we don't use it to make admissions decisions. Um, there's also an interview process. So once you've completed your financial aid and your application documents, we would set you up for two online video conferencing interviews. The first one's easy. It's a quick 30 minutes with me. Mostly it's a coaching session to get you ready for the big interview. That one is a three hour online group interview with two or three other applicants to the program and two faculty members. Now, as you consider whether or not this is the right program for you, I'd ask you to consider these questions. Uh, one, do you have the desire to help heal the whole person and to help people flourish? Two, would you like to have a career that enables you to answer the question, how can I help people? Thirdly, what can you do to make a positive contribution in others' lives? Can you be that instrument of healing? 
And lastly, if you were to apply and be admitted, is this something you'd be committed to finishing? Ask yourself honestly, are you someone who finishes what you begin? If you can give a yes sincerely to all of these questions, we would love to work with you. That is a good indication to us that you'd be a great fit for this program. Our application process is pretty straightforward. The first step is an online demographic form. It takes 20 or 30 minutes. You can do it tonight if you want to. Uh, once we have that uh, first part of the application in hand, our financial aid experts will be in touch to begin discussing tuition, scholarships, which ones you should pursue and what you can reasonably expect from us given your particular financial situation. Um, the other documents are two brief essays, a 500 word personal statement and a 200 word professional statement, um, an updated version of your resume, official transcripts for any degrees conferred. I don't need 27 different transfer credit transcripts. I just need the ones that reflect a degree conferred. You can have them sent electronically to me at my email address. Uh, if possible, that's best. We also need one recommendation from either faculty or a job, a professional type of recommendation, and of course, the, the dreaded GRE. Um, once we have all of your documents and your financial aid work is done, we'll set you up for your interviews and then hopefully admission. Um, once you're accepted, you would receive your scholarship award and begin onboarding to be seated in the cohort. Um, classes for the fall cohort do begin on August 17th, 2022. Uh, however, that deadline has passed, so now we are enrolling for the January cohort, um, and classes begin early in January, around the 7th, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but early January, you have plenty of time to apply for that cohort. All right, that concludes my presentation. I thank you for attending our webinar. As I said, if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them now. I see we do have one, but if you uh, can think of something that you wanted to ask, you can go ahead and pop that question into the chat or into the Q&A. Uh, if you have to jump off now, we totally understand. Thank you again for being here. Um, as a concrete example of that, thank you. I'd like to offer you a waiver of the application fee. If you can just jot down that code CCMMP1999, that will um, save you the $55 application fee. Um, you can jot down my contact information as well. Um, that's my direct number. You can text me at that number. That's always a great way to get me. You can also email me anytime. All right, let's see what questions we have here. All right. So we have a, uh, someone who's visiting, uh, attending this webinar from Africa. And I know um, that you would love to attend our program. Unfortunately, we don't admit international students generally. We do inter admit international students for counseling from the UK, Ireland, and Australia. That's it. So um, if you're in Africa, I encourage you to look into our master's in psychology degree. Oftentimes that is sufficient for acting as a counselor internationally. So you don't need this master's degree in counseling in Africa the way you would do in the US generally. So, and then Megan wants to know if applications for next August are open yet. Um, technically, I think you could go and apply. Uh, we are really focused on our January applicants right now. If you want to apply for August of 2023, I would encourage you to begin your application early next year. So January, February, March of 23, March at the latest. That way we can give you more of our full time and attention. So essay prompts, Kate wants to know where the essay prompts in the application, you can't actually see them until you complete and sign the demographic form. Um, so once you finish sections one through eight and you sign your application and enter the fee, to, uh, the code to waive the fee, then the essay prompts will pop up. However, if you email me and ask me for them, I will be happy to send them to you ahead of time. You don't have to jump through the hoops if you wanna see the essay questions. All right, looks like that's all of our questions for today. I wanna to thank you again for attending the webinar. I appreciate you. 
and I look forward to speaking with you soon. You can go ahead and get started on your application. Once I have it, I'll be in touch to discuss next steps. Have a great week, everyone. I hope you're enjoying your summer. Thanks so much for attending.